I know how everyone has seen the Mothman, but I'm serious on this. I truly believe that I saw Mothman. A couple months ago, something happened to me and my best friend Xander. This was about a week before Halloween, so I was already on edge about freaky stuff going on. But me and my closest friend Xander were having a sleepover at my house and my neighborhood friend Josh wanted to go outside. Around 10 p.m. we play hide and seek in the neighborhood. My friend Xander was seeking and Josh was hiding with me. Josh's parents were very strict and never let him stay out this late so after 10 minutes he got the call saying it was time to come home. Usually I walk him home but tonight I couldn't because it's super late and I was still hiding from Xander. So I sent him off and I walked to the end of road. A few minutes after he was gone I saw something standing across the road from me. I never really got a good look at it but it was good enough. It was a bird-like creature. Face was too dark to make out but the body of it was massive, absolutely huge and this thing had to be at least 7 feet tall. I didn't even really acknowledge it at first and I looked away freaked out and realized I just saw something. And I turned back to look for it and it had disappeared. I was freaked out but didn't think much of it. Then my phone starts going off like crazy and I check to see who's blowing me up and it's Xander scared shitless telling me he saw something and to regroup him. So we meet up in front of my house and as soon as I see him he is horrified. Like piss your pants scared and he can barely speak and when he does he starts telling me he saw something watching him in the woods behind my house. What he described was exactly what I saw, extremely tall, glowing eyes, wings. At first I thought maybe I was tripping and then I realized there was no way Xander could have also been tripping balls and saw exactly what I saw. And so we took a second to get our senses back, then we turned our phone lights on and went to go investigate. I kid you not minutes after we set out to go looking we heard a woman scream bloody murder for help and followed it. After that we heard an unearthly roar, not like something a wild animal could make, the unholy sound was blood curdling needless to say we didn't even have to say a word, me and Xander both looked at each other and ran, we both ran faster than we ever have, before panicking we wanted to call the cops but then realized how stupid we would sound. About 10 minutes later we felt we had to do something. We didn't think it would be a good idea but we went back out anyway. We went back to the woods behind my house and started searching for anything unusual. Seconds later we heard twigs snapping. We started to regret the decision of coming back here. I then heard a low growling and my fight or flight kicked in. There's no way I'm gonna fight some 7 foot monster so I grabbed Xander's arm and started running. He got the message and we ran back to my front yard and just kinda zoned out no words, no blinking, nothing. I couldn't think straight seconds. Later we looked in the woods we just ran from and I know I wasn't hallucinating because Xander saw it too, that thing in the woods flying away. After that we went inside and just watched a movie and fell asleep. Needless to say the next morning we were both still pretty shaken up about what happened last night. Shortly after he went home. We are still closer than ever today and hang out all the time but when it's just me at home I still get the creeps and going in the woods will never be the same. I can't just forget what happened that night. I'm really glad we didn't get hurt and about the lady who did get hurt apparently she really did die and I feel awful about that. But I'm still glad me and my friends never got hurt. We never told anyone what we saw that night not even Josh. I still go exploring and I don't think I'll ever stop but I can't lie my worst fear is that one day when I'm out walking with my girlfriend or just out alone I'll see that same pair of red glowing eyes somewhere in the darkness and that next time I might not be so lucky. When I was about 11 to 12 my mom was pregnant and asked me to clean out the cat litter. We live out literally in the middle of nowhere with big fields and pastures wrapped all around. My grandparents lived directly across from me and had a big dumpster bin where we'd all dump our trash into. I'm walking across the rock road with a grocery bag of cat poo in my hand and I noticed that my grandparents motion light was already on and thought it was odd but didn't think much else. I kept walking and see something like a white blob on top of the dumpster. I'm not wearing my glasses so it's a little fuzzy and I'm thinking it's a cat. So I'm slowly walking up to it. PST sting at it not trying to scare it away. As I'm walking slowly, 
something starts banging on the dumpster. In my head I'm like what the f but creep closer for about 5 more seconds until there is the biggest bang and drop. For reference the dumpster is directly in front of a big wooden fence and about 20 feet back is a barbed wire fence. This thing takes off and has to hop around the fence and I see its entire white spine, just so bony, and once it gets close to the barbed wire fence it turns left, and I see its entire side, the way it's running, like a human dog hybrid. But no hair. Just skin and bone. I panic and run home and I'm crying to my mom and she's yelling at my sister telling her to stop scaring me. Maybe a year later found a photo of the rake. Everyone I tell this story to acts like I'm out of my mind but the image of the rake's back is forever burned into my mind. Not a cryptid, but there is anecdotal evidence that there is at least one, and possibly several, mountain lions in my area, a rural farmland area that should absolutely not have cougars, nor are they allowed as pets. There have been no sightings or photos taken of it slash them, but paw prints and scat have been found and confirmed by authorities and experts. Pretty sure it was a mountain lion that darted across the road in front of me driving one night, just beyond the reach of my headlights. It was long and low, tan or gray colored, and very fast and very muscular. If it wasn't a cougar, then I'm freaked out as to what else it could have been. There are no myths or legends about cryptids where I am. I don't really think so anymore, but until I was around 12 years old I was vehemently convinced that dragons existed and nothing anyone would tell me would convince me otherwise. And I even managed to convince one of my cousins once as well, and the belief is because of this story. I was around four at the time, no clue what day since time was an illusion as far as I was concerned. Back then, I had just woken up, and dad was off at work. Though thinking back on it grandparents were likely still around, since they used to live in the same yard as us, just in a different house. I remember feeling like I really needed to look out the window and clambering up on the bed to do so, looking out for a few seconds until, suddenly, the entire window was filled with this scale, purple mass seemingly moving at extreme speeds uphill. Yet despite the speed it seemed to have it just kept on going and going, and I just knew it had to be a dragon. And got all giddy wanting to open the window and see it better. But I didn't know how to open the window and eventually after what felt like a pretty long time the mass finally disappeared. The dragon having fully moved uphill. Still wanting to see the dragon, I went and tried to open the door to go outside, but it was locked. So, I went and woke up my mom, who was understandably annoyed by suddenly being woken up to because of a dragon, and told me to go back to sleep. The reason I used to believe it so vehemently is not merely a dream is because I couldn't pinpoint the actual point I woke up after seeing the dragon, and don't remember waking up or going to sleep after the interaction with my mom, and thus I was sure some giant dragon existed. A couple years ago I was driving through Illinois, my husband was asleep in the passenger seat. Next thing I know these three birds were standing in the middle of the highway. I drive a Kia Soul and all three of these birds were taller than my hood. They looked super lost and confused, I slammed on the brakes and swerved while yelling. My husband woke up but he missed them. They were brown with long necks. No, they were not emus, I'm very familiar with emus. I thought maybe they were female turkeys but they were way too tall. I've asked my grandma who knows a ton about birds and she was at a loss. I've googled like you wouldn't believe. I have never found out what they were. They were so out of place looking and had to be about 4 feet tall at least. I worked in a bar slash restaurant and was closing up with two other workmates. People said the place had a ghost but I had closed many times before and never heard or seen anything. Before doing any money-related jobs we lock all the doors and check bathrooms for people, and there is only one door to exit. As we were about to leave, about midnight, I heard what sounded like two high-pitched laughs, 
sounded like two young girls. I thought it was just my mind hearing noises as all day you're used to hearing chatter but my colleague turned to me and said f hash ck did you just hear that too? The sound came from around the corner where the locked exit door is and we just froze. Eventually all three of us checked it out, never heard anything more or saw anything. I had to walk home too. I've never sprinted faster in my life. This happened to me when I was around 6 or 8 years old. We live in a compound here when we say compound it is a group of home that is surrounded by one big fence. And all that live there are family like my cousins and aunts. So one day my mom asked me to deliver a pan that we borrow from my aunt. It is about 5 or 6 pm but it is already dark then when I got to my aunt's house I open the door and shout hello Tita. But no one replied. I repeated about 3x the suddenly the doors and windows start to open and close violently. I try to get out of the house but it is locked. When I finally opened it, my cousin next door say that no one is home and that she is shocked that I am able to enter the house. But when we try to open the door again it was locked. Then I later learned that the house is really hunted. They say that there is in spirit of a little girl on that house but it's not evil just playful. I was like playful my ass. Came home with my mom after she got off work. It was like 12 AM, and we lived in a small town in the middle of basically nowhere. There was a small section of forest behind our house, have never seen anything too creepy back there before. As my mom drives into the driveway, her headlights hit something in the tree line. Pale face, sunken in eyes, hunched over in no way a human could. His back legs bent backwards and he had no visible genitals. But he was tall. Hunched over, he was about the size of a regular man. He was looking directly at us and my mom whispered if I saw it too. I started sobbing, rightfully so when faced with something that looks like the rake. My mom backed up and parked in front of the house. We sat there for a minute before sprinting inside where I had nightmares. The next morning we told my neighbor about it. Apparently at about 2 AM she heard something scratching violently at her back door and windows. The dogs didn't bark so she thought it was her son playing tricks on her. Until he walked into her room. Still the creepiest thing I've ever seen and why I can't look at photos or videos of the rake. Because I've seen it. I 100% believe he's real. I did hear something. At the end of spring last year before it started getting warm, I decided to go camping in this old announcers both located next to a river. The 102 River, located in northwest Missouri by the Iowa line, the announcers booth is too, small, stories that requires a five or six step climb to reach the room I was staying in for the night. I would have usually been asleep but I went underprepared and was shivering from sundown sundown no car since dropped off no blankets just a sleeping bag my phone and a lantern style flashlight. 3 colon 30 ish m I could hear light rain hitting the roof and night animal sounds. At that point, I had been hearing night animal sounds for hours. Wolves in the distance like usual around sunset, not much else since. All of a sudden from a distance I hear a really loud whooping sound. Exactly like the sound on the Bigfoot show, everything went extremely quiet. I did not hear insects animals, nothing. 4 to 4.30 AM. Same call again. Everything that had started making noise again went silent. The clarity of the noise is what gave me goosebumps. I could tell whatever made the noise had a powerful frame. Part of the reason I was underprepared was that the shelter had been built with inch wide cracks in the floor and I could see down to the ground level which was dirt and grown up weeds. Anyway, at daybreak, my brother picked me up and after I warmed up I told him the story. Could have been people but I highly doubt it. The crazy thing is I don't even believe in Bigfoot because trail cams would have gotten a few by now.
I live in central PA. I have been hunting fox and such animals for six years now. We were out hunting one night and we use a Fox Pro E collar and red lights. We turned on the call. A rabbit in distress to be exact. I watched a path by myself and heard crashing and saw eyes. I was ready to shoot, but then they moved and stood up. Almost seven or eight feet into the trees. I thought it was a raccoon until I looked through my scope and saw movement below the eyes. Till this day I refuse to sit alone in the woods at night. Another encounter that I can't fully confirm is the rake. I'm a very firm believer that a rake type creature exists and I saw one. It was across a field again at night while hunting. It was moving fast and low but the movement was if someone was crawling on their hands and knees. Never confirmed it but definitely was scary. I live in the middle of nowhere. We're surrounded by woods. I love to run in the woods. I always have a weapon with me in case of a wolf slash bear slash coyote slash whatever attack. I carry a loaded handgun with extra ammo and knife with me. No one says anything when someone has a weapon since it's the middle of nowhere and hunting is very common in my area when it's season. It was deer season, 2018, pre-COVID. It was mid-November. I live in the south so it never gets cold. I decided to have friends over, which is normal. Let's call them Anne, Kate, James, and Finn. My name's Ash, no my last name is not Ketchum. We were all 12 at the time and know damn well how to use weapons, per one of our rules, never carry a weapon you don't know how to use. All of us are country hillbillies and have been around weapons our whole lives. We knew how to use most weapons and have good aim. We got bored so decided you know what, why not go deer hunting? Very common in our area. It was dark and being in the middle of nowhere, we thought it'd be cool. I asked my father and he said I don't care, just be home for dinner. We all put on camouflage so we would blend in with the environment better. We all grabbed loaded handguns, extra bullets, LED headband lights and knives. We were 10 minutes into the woods. We were shooting and killing deer, no, we didn't shoot the mothers or babies. We prefer the bucks because their antlers are very useful. Dude, what the hell was that? Finn asked. We all followed his eye line to see a werewolf-like creature, about 7 feet tall in the distance. We turned off our LED lights. It had jet black fur, a long jet black fluffy wolf-like tail, two jet black fluffy wolf ears blood red eyes and very sharp teeth. It was slobbering out of its mouth. It howled but luckily, didn't see us. Let's get out of here, James whispered to us. We all nodded in agreement. We ran silently, cautious not to make noise back to my house. We shut all the curtains and locked the place down. We explained everything to my father, who didn't seem to believe us. We never went to the woods when it was dark ever since that incident. One more from the hospital prison wing. So there's these two rooms, I'll say 123 and 234, and they share a wall. The hospital isn't that old, built in the 70s, and it's a small town county hospital. We don't take trauma cases and when one does come in, it's only to stabilize them until life flight or EMS can transfer them to another facility. Deaths in room are usually older people and natural causes. The prison wing has been rolling for eight years or so and the prisoners who come in, if they die, it's natural causes. But this one room said. It's just weird. I'm agnostic atheist, but I can't deny the same thing keeps happening in 123 and especially 234. There's a kid. There's been several times, right before they pass, the inmate talks about a kid in the room but it's the ones who are delirious before death. Also, there have been several mentally altered offenders, not drug addled but actual mental status, who have have talked about or completely lost their calm over the kid that was under their bed, or running around, and messing with them. One guy became so violent we had to discharge him from the hospital and back to his unit, 
not solely over the kid, but it seemed like a part of the problem. Occasionally an inmate with full mental capacity would mention the TV in another room was so loud sometimes he could hear it, said it sounded like a kid show or something with kids talking. I kept my hallway quiet and made sure I couldn't hear the TVs in the hall. There's certainly arguments that can be made that word of mouth got back to the units about the kid's story, but neither officers nor nurses made a habit of telling stories to inmates. Besides, we admit offenders from dozens of units. After my father passed away, I went to live with my friend and his mom for a little while. Things with my mom were very strained and I didn't want to stay at my friend's house initially. But they didn't want me alone during that time. Staying at anyone's house always made me feel uneasy for some reason. My first night there, early in the morning I woke up to the sound of my bedroom door opening and a gentleman wearing a red flannel and bib denim overalls came into my room holding a bag of tools. He turned the light on, looked at me and walked through another doorway to the utility room. Soon after, I fell asleep again. But when I woke up this time, room was dark. Everything was the same when I went to sleep the night previously. Figuring I imagined the whole thing I went upstairs for coffee and asked my friend's mom if the guy with the overalls is still here. With a weird look, she informed me that it's been her and I in the house all night. At this point, I'm very confused. So I explain detail in detail about what the man looked like. Height, weight, clothes, facial hair. Everything. She turns pale white and bolts to her room and retrieves a photo. When she shows me the photo, it's the man I saw in the basement that morning. Even wearing the same clothes. She tells me that he passed away 30 years ago. It was her grandpa who owned the property previously. He had killed himself to save the farm when he invested his money into horses instead of machines and his investment flopped. To keep the bank from taking the farm. On a stormy night he took a lightning rod into the middle of a pond and nature took his life when lightning struck the rod. Because of this, life insurance paid out, and his suicide saved the family diary and kept the house from being foreclosed on. My dad had stuff going on in his house, so much stuff that almost every kid who would come in, myself, my sisters, my brother and my dad have all had multiple experiences in there. I remember one time, I was going upstairs to have a shower. The bathroom was the end of the hallway and on the way to it, I had to pass by the room I shared with my sisters when I was over for the weekends. As I passed by, I seen something sit up on the bottom bunk, we had bunk beds in there, out of the corner of my eye. This thing looked like a little girl. She had pale skin, short black hair that was cut in a bob style with straight bangs covering her forehead, and her eyes were these massive circles with large black dots in the center for pupils. She was facing sideways so her right shoulder was facing me when she turned her head, the other half of her body looked like it was under the blankets. I remember getting such an intense feeling of fear that I went back downstairs and refused to go upstairs at all or even sleep in the house. My dad had to set up the camping tent in the backyard for the rest of the weekend. If this occurrence had been nothing slash me just seeing things that weren't there, I feel like I shouldn't still remember it in perfect detail at the age I am now, seen it when I was maybe 6 or so. I'm 23 now. When I was about 14 my family had just moved to a house in the suburbs where there was a lot of open space and the house had a huge backyard. One night about 2200 hours I opened our sliding door to take out the trash and I saw two figures walking towards the house. The best way I could describe them is they were all black, slim almost looked and moved like kangaroos, but I was living in New Jersey and they don't exist in that area. Also they were walking four-footed. But when I opened the door and turned on the light they stood up on two feet and began to run. 
Now I turned and shut the door before I completely saw them run but I got a good enough glance to know this wasn't any regular animal like a deer. And besides there was never any deer in that neighborhood so this was definitely something different. Still creeps me out over 15 years ago. Thirty plus years ago, my mom's stepdad died, my step-grandpa? He was basically her father, real dad walked out when she was nine. There was a gathering at the house following the funeral. Phone rings, my mom picks up, and hears a male caller say her name in an interrogative fashion like Susan? She was sure it was his voice, panicked, and hung up. Caller didn't call back and the reverse dial pulled up a previous number to someone she knew who had called much earlier. So essentially the call from beyond didn't happen as far as the phone company was concerned. To this day, she believes it was him and regrets panicking and hanging up. My mother is not religious slash spiritual slash etc. Bonus story, when my other grandfather died, 2004, from complications following colon surgery. He was in his late 90s so it was a good run, he was in the hospital following his surgery. My dad and aunt had a feeling it might be a 50-50 chance he pulled through, given his age, so they were present. He wakes up and asks when he got back. They ask him to explain. He said he had a dream he was on a road trip in an Airstream trailer with a buddy of his with whom he had a falling out 50 plus years ago. He was driving and they were blinded by a bright light in the windshield. Then he woke up. A few minutes later, he went to sleep and passed. Come to find out he and his buddy had always wanted to do a cross-country road trip, but has some kind of falling out and never spoke again. My grandma remembered it happening shortly after World War II. Must have weighed heavily on him. When I was six my paternal grandfather passed away suddenly from cardiac arrest and I was extremely devastated. During his funeral I had written a letter addressed to him and secretly decided to burn it along with the other paper offering slash effigies that we were going to offer to him, I'm Asian and burning offerings as part of the funeral ritual. The day after the funeral, my grandma's house phone rang and I answered. There was deep breathing before the male voice called out my Mandarin name. I was very convinced it was my grandpa's voice. I freaked out and hung up immediately. I ran to my grandma to tell her what happened, and she was calm about it when I told her about it. The caller never called back. Moments later a huge black moth butterfly bigger than the size of a human palm flies into the house and lands on my grandfather's sitting chair. It remained there for the whole day without moving despite family talking loudly and walking around the house constantly. My grandma told the family that she believed that my grandpa's spirit has returned to the house for the last time. She even turned on the TV and left a cup of tea next to the moth. The whole thing felt so surreal. Working on ships, some are pretty old and you hear some weird stories. Four years ago during a South American season, I used to hang out with the Brazilians, fun and cool people, one was the gift shop manager. He'd rant and rant about how his team is lazy and how they keep trying to weasel out of working because they claim to see a little girl running around the gift shop. One night, we were having coffee with the head of the photography department and he's extra salty, talking about how he'll have to do an extra couple of hours because of his team. In the middle of the night, I get a call from the photo manager, she tells me our friend in her cabin crying and shivering, I run over, thinking he got some bad news from home or something. Turns out he was working in his office, the door faces a long mirror that covers most of the wall, closed section, and after hearing giggling, he saw the shadow of a child through the reflection, as if she was leaning to look into the door while trying to hide, only in the reflection, he says he jumped up and ran out. The giggling and sounds of tiny feet running around the shop and into the casino, same deck. I'm not big into the paranormal, but the following day I mentioned this to my boss and she told me that about 20 years back, a little girl came out of the theater with her parents, she was running ahead of them, around the gift shop, 
but eventually she went into the casino, coming out at the atrium, a drop with glass lifts that go from deck 12 to 5, so a good drop, she leaned over the railing to look down, lost her balance and fell, breaking her neck on impact and dying. Apparently it was a common sighting at the shop and casino. I was working at a summer camp in the PNW one year. On the second or third night there, I was jogging alone back from the staff campfire to the cabin, where the campers and my co-counselor slept. I'm walking in this big grassy throughway that has some taller reeds separating it from a shore of the Puget Sound. It's probably 2 a.m. Full moon. As I'm jogging I see this person in the reeds. It's wearing a white gown, and it has no face, just hair. I only notice it because, as I approached it, it stood up from a crouched position, backed up joltily a few steps, then crouched down again, but I could still see it crouching there, like it was waiting. Its movements told me that it was not human. My knees gave out, and I felt flooded with fear as I collapsed. I tried to run back to my cabin but my legs would. Not work. I crawled and scrambled there on all fours. I tried to scream but no sound came out. Just gasping. I finally got to my cabin and fumbled with the doorknob for what felt like a minute before I could open it. I closed the door and stood there waiting for a while inside. I didn't hear anything, but I barely slept. At some point later that night I remember laughing, thinking oh, it was just one of the campers peeing. I was hysterically laughing at myself for like 20 minutes, then fell asleep. Next morning though, I realized that no campers returned to the cabin that could have potentially been out there peeing that night. I asked all of them, and all of them said they hadn't gone out to pee the previous night. I'll add that this was a camp that was overtly for non-religious, skeptically minded staff and campers, of which I was and still largely am, but I have no explanation for what I saw that night still scares me just typing this. I was reading a library book before bed one night when I was a teenager. It was something really boring I had checked out for a history project for school and I couldn't keep my eyes open. I fell asleep with it on my bed. I had like a sleep paralysis event happen and I watched this shadowy figure of a man walk into my room look around, pick up a few knickknacks and put them back down. It was so terrifying, my entire body was screaming to move but I couldn't, not even my fingers. I just wanted to scream for help but nothing happened, no matter how desperately I tried. I finally got enough courage to look at the man but he wouldn't come into focus for some reason. He was just a shadow, like he wasn't fully there. He came up to the side of my bed and stood over me, looking down at me for what felt like forever. I was so terrified but I couldn't move a muscle. Then he reached down, grabbed my library book, and turned, walking out of my room. I never found that library book, ever, after tearing apart my room and my house. My mom said it was a coping dream for losing the book but I distinctly remember falling asleep reading it that night and I even had sent a text to my boyfriend that night saying that I wished I had chosen a different book because this ome was putting me to sleep. I had to pay a fine and everything. This happened to me when I was six. I was in my bed sound asleep when I felt the mattress beside me slowly shift as if someone was laying beside me. I opened my eyes and there was a full-grown adult woman beside me. She wasn't particularly scary, just normal looking but she was a strange person in my bed. Of course I opened my mouth to scream but before I did she put her finger to her lips as if to tell me to be quiet. Her eyes looked very frightened and she seemed to be silently pleading for me to keep quiet. Of course I screamed my guts out and I heard my parents getting up out of their bed. The strange woman just looked very sad, her eyes were full of tears. Dad turned my bedroom light on and as soon as he did she just wasn't there anymore. No sign of her at all. I slept in my parents room that night. 
I was very scared but even more so I had a deep feeling of sadness. That was decades ago and I still remember it clearly. I've had a few run-ins like that, different people though, never that same woman. So back in the early 2000s right up near McCall, ID me, 16, and my buddy Tyler, 16, were up in the mountains pretty far from any sort of actual civilization. We were up camping with my family and I brought him along. After about day two or three days we had the bright idea to go out on a night exploration. Bad idea. Anyway we didn't tell my parents and just left at about two o'clock in the morning. We were sleeping in a separate tent so sneaking out was easy. We were probably about 20 to 30 minutes into our so-called night exploration and we were decently far from camp. Around this time I started to get an uneasy feeling. I told Tyler that we should probably head back because it was pretty cold and I didn't want to admit I was freaking out. He insisted that we go on and that I should stop being a baby. I agreed. After about 10 more minutes into our night exploration I shined my light into a little clearing of the trees. I thought I saw a tall dark figure with very long lanky legs, a strange shaped body, and no arms. I wasn't too sure what it was and told Tyler we should go a little closer. We did and found this large 12-ish foot tall thing staring right at us both from about 20 feet away. When I tell I have never run faster in my life I mean it. And after the run back to camp my legs were torn apart and bloodied by all the dead branches and whatnot. We had to sleep in my parents tent the rest of the trip. My dad owned rental houses. Back in the 90s, my girlfriend and I'd go in after a renter left and rehab the house. One particular house, he'd purchased years ago with the renter already in the house. When they passed away, we went in and started in the bedrooms, first painting then cutting out the carpets. We noticed we kept losing our carpet cutters but thought we'd accidentally rolled them up in the carpets. So we got fluorescent orange cutters. Nope still can't find them. Then we pull the living room carpet. Several large stains that look exactly like dried blood are soaked into the cork underfloor. Okay, might be stain, or someone butchered a chicken in the living room no telling. But as I'm painting a living room wall, I see a human shaped shadow coast across the wall. I think someone is walking around the house, maybe a meter reader. I run outside and no one is there up or down the street. I run around the house. No one is there. We finish in a big hurry and get paid. My dad calls later and asks what we used to clean with because the house is full of flies. I go back wash every flat surface with bleach and water. Next day full of flies. It's a house built on a concrete slab, so no crawl space. He decides they must be getting in through a crack in the slab and fills the cracks with silica. Nope still flies. I vacuumed up hundreds of dead flies. He had lived through the depression and fought in World War II. He raised 10 kids and lived to tell. But he sold that cursed house in a second. He didn't believe in that stuff but he wasn't a fool. One day my wife came home, we were living in an apartment in Midtown. It's about 10 PM and I was taking the trash to the dumpster in the alley behind my complex. The complex had only six two-story apartments, the front door of each facing south. We lived in number five, and if you were to walk outside, once you open the door there's a little raised landing where you'd put a welcome mat, step off the landing, you're on a walkway. And you have to go either left or right because there's a very tall wooden fence separating the complex from the large house next door. So if you turn right and walk down past apartments number 4 to 1 you run into a gate, go through a gate, and you're now on one of the main streets in Midtown. If you were to turn left coming out of the apartment, you will pass apartment number 6, then the laundry room, and immediately into a wrought iron gate, and immediately on the other side is the dumpster. It's a very short distance from my door to the dumpster and with nothing to obstruct your view, 
You can see from the dumpster all the way down the length of the walkway to the gate at the other end of the complex. The entire area is well lit, literally every unit would turn their front porch light on every night, and there is a street light right where the dumpster is, and one right on the other side of the street side gate. So it was easy to see my wife open the gate and head up the walkway towards our apartment. I waved at her and have no idea how she didn't see me, and I thought about yelling but didn't want to scare her or startle the neighbors. I was done emptying the garbage so I just started walking the short distance to her. As I'm walking up, I see the door to our apartment open, of course I figured she opened it but it was dark so I didn't actually see her do it, then she kind of leans in and I could hear her calling my name, but she would not walk into the apartment, our own apartment, so why not walk right in, right? Then, when I got behind her and said hi she became frantic, asking me how did you do that, how did you get back outside? I explained I'd been at the dumpster emptying the trash, to which she interrupted me said no, you opened the door for me and walked upstairs, I called after you and you turned your head and looked at me but didn't say anything and just kept walking, and then she started crying. I searched the apartment, found nothing. We moved about six months later to the house where it now. One day shortly after we moved in, my wife thought she saw me walk past the windows that look into the backyard from the kitchen, but it wasn't me, and again she said it looked just like me, and that it walked all the way around the house before disappearing, and then she realized I was in the bedroom. Creepy stuff. Edit, sentence structure edit too, just want to be clear, we're not believers, we don't see the paranormal in the everyday, have no history of seeing ghosts or spirits, we aren't ghost hunters, we aren't religious, we aren't cult members, we don't worship the devil, I don't even listen to Slayer all that much these days lol we're rational adults with a family and careers, who always look for the rational solution that can be backed by science. My wife has no health issues, mental or physical, that would lend themselves to experiencing something like this. And while L am bipolar, I did not witness it myself, and my bipolar doesn't cause me to see hallucinations, at least I've never experienced any type of hallucinations, I think that's actually LSD lol that's all, just wanted to clarify. I was getting ready for bed in the bathroom. I had the door open as I was talking to my husband who was sitting on the bed. I was having a whole conversation with him, I even looked at him a couple times then he stopped answering me so I repeated myself and he answered but was in the living room. Now the living room was past the bathroom and I never saw him walk by and there was no way I would have missed it. He comes into the bathroom and was like were you talking to me? And I said yes. He said oh I didn't hear you I was in the living room. So I asked how long he was in there and he said for a long time but he was gonna get ready for bed. I asked if he was ever in the bedroom in the last like 10 minutes and he said no, he's been in the living room the whole time. He swears he wasn't ever in the bedroom. So I don't know who the F I was seeing and talking to but it terrified us both. Uck gives me shivers I can still see it just sitting up on the bed. When I was in high school I worked as a courtesy clerk at Albertsons. People were always telling me that they saw me somewhere in town when I wasn't there. One day when I got out of class at the end of school, I had to go straight to work. I wouldn't get home until just after 9 o'clock that night. So I walked in just after 9 o'clock and said hi people to my mom and my sisters. And they all looked confused. My mom asked me where I was coming from. I said I had been at work. My mom and my older sister both said, no you haven't. You came in hours ago said hi people and went upstairs. I said, no I didn't I hadn't been home since I left at 7 o'clock this morning. So we all four went upstairs to my room to see who came home. My door was closed. I usually leave it open. The light was on and the TV was on. Open the door, no one there. But wait. It gets weirder. In high school we had a secondary school called the Skill Center. 
It was a place that had a collection of vocational classes you could take. For instance, I took TV broadcasting, web design and forestry. One day I was waiting for the bus to leave the skills center after my broadcasting class and a teacher I never met ran up to me and said Zoshiba. You need to come back to class I had never been in her class. But apparently I had been missing for the last few seasons. I tried to explain I wasn't in her class, but she did seem to know who I was. So she took me to the office. Thinking I was ditching. We go in and I tell the office clerk my name and she looks me up. Sure enough there I am in broadcasting just like I said. But there I am, under my stepdad's last name in her class. I went by both names, it was a bit confusing but both names were relatively unique. So it's not like there would have been a random person that looks just like me in her class. It's just extremely unlikely. I had been in her class for the entire semester until I mysteriously stopped showing up. I had turned in work and everything even had my goddamn signature on it. One day this doppelganger simply stopped showing up. No one ever saw him again. I had a friend that lived at some apartments down the street from me. I went over, he answered and was like he have a seat, I got used the bathroom. I'm like cool, so I'm sitting there watching TV for 20 minutes or so, then the front door opens. There was my friend in work uniform staring at me like WTF. I'm like bro what did you do jump out the window? He's like WTF are you talking about? You opened the door for me. No I didn't. You did you said you had to poo. I wasn't here, you were, you okay. I'm a sit down. So one of my best friends was monitoring me for the rest of the night to make sure I wasn't tweaking. He also asked me to come closer so I can hear better as he was talking to me. He was checking his stuff to make sure nothing was missing, that much was obvious. We are still friends today, and he brought up that incident last year 2021, and the incident was like 2001, just to be sure. I have no explanation, dude let me into his own apartment, then same dude showed up 20 minutes later wondering how the F I got it. My childhood friend encountered Depp Elgonger cryptid. He was about 15 and home alone over a long weekend while his parents were traveling. But on Saturday night, around 7 to 8 p.m., he was in his bedroom upstairs when he suddenly heard his mom call up the stairs to come get dinner. He popped his head out of his room, confused, but no one was there. So he called back down, Mom? Are you home already? There was a long beat but then after a few seconds, his mom walked slowly around the corner, coming from where the kitchen was, and looked straight up at him from the bottom of the steps. She just smiled, and then walked right back into the kitchen. My friend was frozen in place for a moment but then, again, he heard her call him to come get dinner. He said the only reason he didn't just walk down those stairs to see WTF was going on and why she was home so early was because he thought it was strange that she didn't talk or utter a single word when she appeared. Like, why did she just smile at him and then walk away? That just didn't sit right, the fact he never saw her open her mouth. He could hear her, and he could see her, both plain as day. But never at the same time. And that smallest of details is why he chose instead to slam his door shut, lock it, and call his mom. She answered immediately and was still several states over, hundreds of miles away. They ended up calling the police for fear of an intruder or something, but they never found anyone in the house. It was all locked up with the security system on and everything. He did not sleep there alone anymore after that. Anyway, I don't know what the answer is here but just want your wife to know she isn't crazy. We spent a lot of time researching doppelgangers after that incident and the only bit of advice I remember is that you aren't supposed to speak to them or follow them. If I remember correctly, they really want you to follow them or go to where they are. Don't. Just treat them like they aren't there, as best you can.
My first year of university a girl I lived with had her friend over one night. He'd been shooting footage on London Bridge at 3 a.m. to get some shots of it abandoned at night. He was really riled up about something and insisted we watch it with the audio up all the way and listen closely. Around the one minute mark I heard a low, deeply menacing voice whisper slowly as you walk the devil's path. Then something unintelligible. Then death. It felt so final and evil. He turned to us and said, did you hear it? I said I'd heard a voice. What did it say? I told him what I'd heard. His face went white. You heard the exact same thing as me. You're not the first. My housemate said she'd heard the same thing as well. He hadn't heard the voice when he was on the bridge, only when he was working on the audio, but he'd shown it to other people who had heard the same thing. I don't really have any other paranormal encounters so this one might not stand out, but I'm generally wary of paranormal stuff and this still scared me. There was some sort of presence on that bridge at night. It wanted to make itself known. I don't ever want to know what it was. I suffer from a fairly well-known but understudied affliction known as Meniere's disease. It's an inner ear disorder that affects the middle ear, specifically the hearing and balance functions. Symptoms include tinnitus, a feeling of fullness in the afflicted ear, permanent hearing loss, and debilitating vertigo attacks. I was diagnosed with it in 2000 at the age of 18 after suffering two years of horrible vertigo attacks. It was a pain to find a diagnosis, but once we did, my mom got us hooked up with a specialist that was able to somewhat treat it. Since that time I have continued to have the tinnitus and fullness, but the vertigo attacks have all but vanished. In fact, by the time this story happened in 2015, I hadn't experienced any sort of vertigo in over a decade. Enough of that though. As the story goes, I was working late into the wee hours of the morning when I decided to take a break to catch a smoke and take my dog out. Once we got outside and downstairs to the small grassy area next to my apartment building, I let my dog off the leash and popped a squat on the stairs and watched as she did her doggy stuff. By the time my cigarette was halfway finished, she had already taken a long leak and was now starting to make big sweeping circles looking for a place to park her poop. Knowing it would probably be a couple more minutes until she found her ideal spot, I just kept on smoking while I counted her laps, it was 10 at that point. As she does with her weird little poop ritual, she'll make one big final circle outside of the area she has been stomping around in before zeroing in. As I watched her start to make her final sweep, she stopped dead in her tracks about 20 feet in front of one of the trees that spot the landscape in front of my apartment complex. I was about another 30 or so feet behind her location, but I could see from where I was sitting, that her hackles had come out and her body was completely rigid. Knowing my dog like I did, she was about 20 seconds away from losing her stuff and waking up half the neighborhood with her angry bark. I put my smoke out and started walking her way and softly calling her name. Usually this is enough to break her focus and get her to calm down, but that night, she was onto something. As I started getting closer to her, I noticed a change in my ever-present tinnitus. It had changed in pitch and become a lot louder. Louder than I remember it being in a long time. Another few steps, and I start to feel a weird sensation behind my left eyeball. It was not an unfamiliar feeling, but like the level of the tinnitus, I had not felt it for some time. I took another few steps where I come up on my dog and gently pet her back. As I did that, a piercing pain shot through the left side of my head. Once again, it was not an unfamiliar feeling, but it was not something I had experienced in some time. Nor did I want to. It was the telltale sign that within the next 90 seconds, I was going to start my first vertigo attack attack in nearly 11 years. I started to talk to my dog in a more stern tone to try and break whatever trance she was in but she ignored me and continued to focus on the tree in front of us, only now she was letting out a deep guttural growl unlike anything I had ever heard from her before or since. Like clockwork, the pain behind my left eye and left side of my head abruptly ended, 
and I was hit with a wave of heavy vertigo. I hooked on my dog's leash and stood up. When I did, the vertigo gave off the sensation that my brain had detached from the base of my spine and was doing freeform back flips in my skull. I had to fight to stay upright and keep my eyes from rolling back so I had enough perceived balance to make it back upstairs. To do this, I focused on the tree that my dog had been so upset about. And that's when it decided to step out from behind the tree and into our view. What it was remains to be seen, but I can tell you that it was tall. Taller than me, and I stand at 6 feet 7 inches. It was skinny too. Like unimaginably skinny. So skinny in fact, that you wouldn't believe organs could fit inside its torso. Along with its odd stature, the thing's skin was this deep pitch black. Due to the color, and the weird way it played with the poor lighting, it was impossible to make out any disenable facial or body features. From that impression alone, the only description I can muster up is that it looked like a poorly drawn 2D stick man that busted off the page. My dog was dead silent at this point, but she was shaking. We didn't dare move though, so I just stared at this thing as it looked back at us from maybe 6 feet in front of us. A few seconds more, and then the thing turned around and took off down the street away from us running at an astounding speed. It moved oddly though. Like it was gliding rather than running. Almost what a cross-country skier might look like, but even smoother and completely silent. It covered half a block in a matter of seconds before jumping over a six-foot fence in a single leap and vanishing into the night. A second after it vanished, my vertigo stopped, the tinnitus went down, and I was fine again. Well, mostly fine. I ended up doubling over and puking before walking my dog back. I don't know if my sudden vertigo attack was related to what I saw that night, but it certainly feels that way. Vertigo attacks that are associated with Meniere's tend to last an hour at their shortest and 24 hours at their longest. My attacks always averaged in the 12 to 16 hour range. This attack lasted less than two minutes. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.